Hey guys, Ben here from Overland Trail Guides, gonna be talking to you about the Death Valley Adventure Route today. But before we get into all those details, I wanted to show you something that we haven't looked at in any of our other videos, even though we've had them for a while, and those are adventure badges. Uh, we have over a do dozen of them now right here. I think we have a uh, Whipsaw Trail up in BC. Um, what else do we have? We have the Rim Rocker Trail in Utah and Colorado, Lost Coast Trail in Northern California, and of course, the Death Valley Adventure Route. Very cool stuff. You can get those by going to our website at www.overlandtrailguides.com. Before we get into the details, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like what you're seeing, why don't you leave a comment down below as well? So as promised, let's get into those meaty details about the route. The main route is approximately 420 miles long and it has an average trail rating of a two to a three and a peak trail rating of a five to a six. And that really kind of depends on the conditions at places like Dedecker Canyon. The recommended time of year is November to May. So you could avoid those insane summertime heats that often exceed 120 degrees in the summer in Death Valley. The recommended vehicle is a high clearance four by four. Now, if you have something like a stock four by four, you might be able to do the main route, but if you have something like a, a Sprinter 4x4, check out that alternative route we have. It skips some of the harder sections like uh, Lippincott Pass, the Decker Canyon, and you'll still be able to experience the majority of the discovery points along the route. And speaking of discovery points, there are 29 discovery points on this particular route. Uh, one last thing that we wanted to call out, because you are in a national park, Make sure you check the fire restrictions. There's many places within the park um, that you're actually not allowed to have fires. So make sure you're aware of that. And also you're gonna need to pay uh, that park fee. As of today, I believe the standard park fee is $35, uh, but they always seem to be going up. Now let's go into Google Earth and check out what things look like over there before we get into our adventure. The majority of the route is within the boundaries of Death Valley National Park in the California desert and surrounded by the basin ranges. As we noted before, there are 29 discovery points along the route. And if you don't have a high clearance 4x4, be sure to check out the alternative route that skips some of the more challenging sections in the Decora Canyon and Lippincott Pass. The official track starts in the south of the park in Badwater Basin, the lowest point in North America. We'll work our way up to Rhyolite Ghost Town before dropping into the insanely rugged Titus Canyon. And from Titus Canyon, we'll continue north past Crankshaft Junction to camp at Eureka Dunes for the night. After Eureka Dunes, we'll make our way through the rugged waterfall section of Dedecora Canyon up and over Steel Pass before dropping into Saline Valley. From there, we'll make a semi-loop by taking Lippincott Pass to the racetrack Playa and then around Hidden Valley and the South Pass. We'll make our way over to Cerro Gordo Ghost Town before finishing things off at Alabama Hills by driving the infamous Movie Road. Good morning from the Mojave Desert. We just camped at Fossil Falls Campground with a small group last night. Uh, one of the people was already there at a campsite. We parked uh, next to them and other people rolled up throughout the night. Uh, and then we're headed to Olancha. We're gonna meet the group up there and then we're gonna be working our way into the heart of Death Valley National Park, mostly pavement for today. We'll be making a stop, I know, at Star Wars Canyon at Father Crowley Overlook. And we may hit some other stuff along the way. As far as our, our end destination, probably gonna be either a hole in the wall or up by Rhyolite. It'll de it will depend what we do in terms of uh, progress, mileage, and timing all today. But it should be fun. Let's go check it out.
at Star Wars Canyon. Have not seen a fighter jet yet. Have no idea if they're gonna come today, but either way, still a great view, worth coming out. So you notice we drove down from the top, you can park at the top, there's a bathroom up there. If you drive down here, come right to the edge and see all this. So while we didn't manage to see any fighter jets flying through Star Wars Canyon during our visit, a few short days later on an adventure, we'd experience a truly awesome flyover in Saline Valley. And yes, you better believe we got it on camera. I just put this in here, actually. It has a little built-in privacy screen. So this uh, got a little built-in screen. You are legit now. Okay, so we are on Artist Palette Drive, or Artist Drive. Uh, doing this little loop, we decided we were going to do it before we go over to camp, and it looks like that's going to be hole in the wall tonight, and definitely has enough room for the group, because I think there's nine rigs, maybe ten if somebody rolls in later tonight, so we need a little bit more space, but let's check out some of these awesome uh, views on the rocks coming up. Most of the group opted not to stop at Artist Palette as we were itching to get to camp, but the oxidized rocks and soils are said to create a vibrant palette of colors if you're lucky enough to catch it during or right after a rainstorm. We scrambling up this? Oh, we're scrambling. First camp for the night. And oh, the wall's right there. Check it out in the morning. Good morning from Hole in the Wall Campground. We had a great night last night. The moon was rise, rising above us, it was illuminating the lighter colored cliffs, uh, contrasting against them the, the darker shadows of the mountains around us, and it was, it was just really, really cool. But let's talk about today. So, uh, we're gonna go up to Beatty, Nevada, get some cheap gas. Gas is always cheaper in Nevada compared to California. I think we might stop at Rhyolite Ghost Town, and then we're gonna head through Titus Canyon, always one of the highlights of going to Death Valley. And then I think we're gonna make our way north towards Eureka Dunes and hopefully set up camp there for tonight. And maybe we'll stop another few places along the way. Either way, should be fun. Let's go check out some of the stuff around us at Hole in the Wall in the meantime. Cool. So one of the cool things about Hole in the Ground is it starts to get a bit lusher start to have cacti that shows up and as you head up through the gap in the canyon gap in the canyon uh, it gets a lot lusher on desert standards more shrubbery more cacti stuff like You guys want to see something cool? I play on wind. Found a fossil, guys. Oh. Check this out. You did? Yeah, look at this. You think that was maybe under the new. You can hold it. You think under that was maybe under the ocean? Yeah. Maybe this was all under the ocean millions of years ago? Yeah. Nevada gonna get some cheaper gas. I don't think there's such thing as cheap gas these days. And then I think we're gonna drop over to Rhyolite Ghost Town, let the kids explore for a little bit before we shoot through Titus Canyon. But it's gonna be a good one. One of the highlights of uh, this route for sure, and Death Valley.
look who showed up. So we just got some $4 a gallon gas in Beatty. Sounds expensive, but relatively cheap given how expensive gas prices are, especially in California. Heading to Rhyolite right now. We did see a burro in town and a couple of more in the hills on our way out. I think we're gonna explore Rhyolite for a little bit, air down, and then hit the dirt for Titus Canyon next. So we are below Rhyolite, I forget what the exact name of this is, it's the old something open air museum. This exhibit actually was moved, it used to be on the other side, now it's on the right side, and head out. Goldwell Open Air Museum features a number of exhibits, but the Ghost of the Final Supper is by far and away the most popular one. Okay, that's Rhyolite Open Air Museum. Next up, let's go to Titus Canyon for some fun on the dirt. So we are heading over to the old Leadfield Boomtown. Uh, the premise on this is false advertising led 300 prospectors down here. I think it was 1906, something like that, or 1926. And then within a year, found nothing, or not a whole lot, and uh, everybody vacated the premise. We still have these old buildings out here, which is pretty cool. And we'll show you one of the old mining setups further down. One way to do it. And then window escape. Window escape. Any ghosts in there? Nope. Are you sure? It looks condemning. <laughs> Let's go in. Oh yes. Should we camp here for tonight? No. No. I say go to Sandy. Okay. So the kids are yelling about a mine or a mine shaft over here. 
curious to see if there's anything, and you know what? I think there is. Let's go look. Alright, everybody look and smile. Everybody look. Cheeseburger! Oh, go ahead and look. Turn around. Everybody look. One, two, three. Once you summit Red Pass, the grandiosity of Titus Canyon's steel and golden hued cliffs come into view. I'm a big fan of the Upper Canyon, but it's the final two mile drive through the Canyon Narrows that make this one of the most spectacular backcountry drives in the entire park. Okay guys, we obviously finished Titus Canyon. We're on our way to Eureka Dunes right now. We sent an early group, uh, Joey, Daniel, and Kai, to hopefully get us a site over there. And right now, we are raising the sun, trying to beat it over there so we can catch the sunset at the dunes, but it is gonna be close. All right, we made it to Eureka Dunes. We still got daylight. They managed to get a great spot for us. I guess uh, somebody was pulling out, they pulled in, they got it, so we get to have a fire tonight. Kids are going up there, gonna have some fun. I think maybe what I'll do, get up early tomorrow, try to catch the sunrise up there. Um, throw on the Tevas, should be fun. <laughs> 